Let's take a look at the optical focusing systems of our Nikon D850. If you enjoy my teaching style and approach, I would highly recommend you check out my Nikon D850 crash course, which is designed to take you from pure beginner to shooting on a very advanced level in about four hours. I'll put that link in the description. So what's the easiest way to learn our camera's optical focusing systems? I teach my students a toolbox method. The toolbox method is different than the recipe method. A recipe method is a list of steps. I don't like the recipe method because if the scenario changes or is different, it's not going to apply. Toolbox teaching means that I teach you the tool concepts and then how to change those accordingly. In the case of focusing systems, it's the how, the when, and the where the camera is focusing. Those three concepts is going to make this super easy. And by the way, if you don't have your camera, pause the video, go grab it, and follow along. So how does the camera focus? Out of the box, as with most cameras, a halfway shutter button depression activates the camera's focusing systems. Something you need to know is I've turned on the beep feature so we can actually hear when the focusing systems are engaged. Halfway shutter button depression, pushing it down all the way, We'll take the picture. Pretty straightforward. On the D850, we also have the auto focus on button, which is very useful for something called back button focusing that I will cover a little bit later on in this video. Next, let's talk about the when the camera is focusing. This has to do with the camera's focusing modes, which can be accessed with the mode switch right here. It's kind of an obscure place for control next to the lens mount just below the lens release, you'll see a switch there that says AF and M. On the top of that switch, you're going to notice a button. So anytime we change a focusing mode or a cluster, we're going to push this button and then looking through the viewfinder, if we rotate the rear control wheel, you're going to notice that we have these letters on the bottom of our screen changing. AFS stands for Auto Focus Single Focusing Lock. And what this means is that once we engage the camera's focusing systems, if we hold that halfway shutter button halfway down, focus will stay locked. It will not change. This is ideal for shooting non-moving subjects, such as people who are cooperating with you, not children, landscapes food photography, things of that nature. So if you want to get a focusing lock, auto focus S. And in a later lesson on the crash course in the portrait section, I'm going to teach you something called recomposing. That's where you get a focusing lock and you move the camera to make the subject more aesthetically pleasing. Push it down all the way when you're ready to take the picture. So that's auto focus single, best for one-time focus lock on non-moving subjects. Auto focus C, AFC, stands for auto focus continuous. This is a repeated predictive focus. It's going to focus over and over and over again. And something you're going to hear is that we don't get that beep noise. No beep. And the reason is the camera is constantly focusing over and over again. Now in both AFS and in AFC, when the focusing systems are engaged, you're also going to notice in the bottom left-hand corner, we have this little white circle. That means the focusing systems are engaged. So we've talked about the how, we've talked about the when and how to change those modes, auto focus single, auto focus continuous, push this button here, rotate the back wheel. Now let's talk about the where. This has to do with the camera's focusing squares. I also lovingly refer to them as focusing clusters. As a quick side note, if you are on autofocus single, you will not see all of the clusters. It's best to do this on autofocus continuous. So pushing and holding the autofocus selector button down, now we're going to rotate the front control wheel. So as we do this, looking through the viewfinder, you're going to notice that these focusing squares and dots are changing in the focusing grid of our viewfinder. We also get these different letters in the bottom right hand corner. The most important focusing cluster, I believe personally for my type of shooting, 
is a single focusing square. This is one square, also designated with S, and you're going to notice that when you push on the directional pad or on the joystick, you can control the position of this square. So looking through the viewfinder, I'm moving this square around. Very nice. The reason why this is so wonderful, it gives us very specific control of where the camera should be focusing in the viewfinder. This one little area. And I use it probably about 80% of the time. Something else you should know is that after you've moved the focusing square, if you push on the set button, the center button of the control pad, that will reset it to the center. Pushing into the camera body on the joystick will act as your auto exposure lock. Just a quick side note there. Let's take a look at some of the other focusing clusters. Again, pushing and holding the auto focus control button down. I'm going to rotate my front control wheel, and now I see something that says D9. It's a square with eight little points around it. The idea of the focusing cluster is the general idea is that as you expand the area, the camera is going to be looking around that focusing. It, within those dots or squares, that's where the camera is looking. Now, as a side note, the dots are focusing points the camera uses. We just don't always, uh, we're not always able to specifically select them. So on D9, you see one square and you see these eight dots. It means the camera's looking around that square. And as we continue to go through the next cluster, D25, then we have nine boxes and several dots between them. D72. D72, I like for birds in flight. Why? Because a single focusing square is too small for a little bird flying around. And this is going to allow the camera to find the area of greatest contrast and lock on that. If we continue, we're going to see D153. We have some control. We can move our individual square around, but really the camera is looking within the entire focusing array. If we go a little bit further, we have something that says 3D. The 3D focusing cluster is unique in that when we engage focusing and hold our shutter button halfway down, the camera is actually going to change which focusing square we're using and it's going to track moving subjects. Try it out right now. Get a focus on something, hold it down, and then move the camera around, and you're going to see that that box is changing. It's a very powerful tool. I have many friends that swear by it for sports shooting. I've noticed that sometimes it won't be perfect depending on the background, but it's, it's one of the best in terms of tracking through an optical focusing system that's very unique to Nikon cameras. Going a little bit further, we next have the group four squares. It's a little unique in that we designate focus within those four boxes. Usually it does a better job of ignoring the background as in terms of D25 or D9. And then finally we get to the auto focusing cluster. I'm not a big fan of it. It tells the camera to find the greatest area of contrast in the viewfinder and to lock on that. I never use it. So we've talked about the how, the when, in the where of our D850's focusing systems, let me give you a few more tips. A common question that I get on these videos is in regards to the focusing systems not working. So if your camera's focusing systems are, are totally not working, it's probably one of a few things. Number one, most lenses have an auto focus to manual switch. If that switch is on manual, auto focus will not work. It's the first place you should look. The second is on the autofocus control switch itself. Again, if it's pointed towards manual, autofocus is not going to work. And uh, another thing sometimes I get a question on is how come you can't move your focusing squares around? If your directional pad switch is turned to L, that is going to lock your focusing squares. You will not be able to change them. Real quick, let's talk about back button focusing, which is a phenomenal technique if you do a lot of sports shooting. For beginners, I recommend holding off on it for now, but as you get more comfortable, you're going to want to customize your camera specifically for the way you shoot. Back button focusing removes auto focus from the halfway shutter button depression, and we will engage it using the auto focus on button only. An example where this is useful is, let's say you're at a, at a sporting event and you're shooting and your subject stops, and you want to recompose the frame, 
The problem with halfway shutter button depression is if the focusing square is on the background and you push that down, it's gonna jump on the background. So it allows photographers to separate the focusing systems away from the shutter. How do you set this up? We're going to go into the menu, custom tab, it's going to be the red tab, A, auto focus, and we're gonna go down to AF activation, and we're going to turn that to AF on only. If you go further to the right, there is gonna be this question, enable, yes, you wanna leave that on enabled. And now when we push a shutter button halfway down, nothing happens with focusing. This is just a shutter button, focusing is engaged here. If you set that up and you forget to change it back, you may feel like your camera's focusing systems aren't working. Let me give you a couple more tips in the custom menu. At A4, we have 3D tracking with face detection. So if you find yourself using a lot of 3D detection with people and you wanna jump on their face, I would recommend turning that on. I don't particularly use 3D a lot. Another one, a really good one, is A7. Focusing square by orientation. What this means is that when you select a specific focusing square for landscape, let's say, the camera will remember that differently than when you jump to portrait. So if you're shooting a person, let's say, and you're jumping back and forth between landscape and portrait, every time you rotate the camera, it will remember the last focusing square you used in that position. It's really great for portrait photographers. I love it, I use it all the time. And then the other one I really like is A11, that's the wraparound. Basically what it means is that if you are focusing on the left side of your frame and you want to jump all the way around to the right side, you just push to the left and it jumps off the frame and, and appears over here. And so that's some really good little customization tips. I hope you guys enjoyed the focusing lesson. I, again, I teach by toolbox method. Y you know, to become a great photographer, button pushing is not enough. And there's lots of great button pushing videos. My D850 crash course starts off with photography basics, goes into composition, digital basics, camera operation, menus, and then I show you how to put it all together. It's an all-in-one course, the best investment you can make for learning specifically with your own camera. In any event, I thank you guys so much for your support. Put the links in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. If you found this video helpful, you might be interested in one of my many courses on DSLRs as well as advanced techniques. They're available worldwide by download and they come with a 100% money back guarantee. You can order them from the following link.